Today we'll be learning about backyard chickens from Austin Spencer. Austin operates a livestock feed business and specializes in custom poultry feed mixes. He was a farming entrepreneur from a young age and ran a small hatchery and flock of over 300 birds for several years. Originally from Orderville, Utah, Austin now lives in Cedar City and is a student at SUU. Austin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Natalie. Good to be with you guys today. Um, a little different than we usually do here as, uh, as we're over Zoom. We, we typically do these meetings at live, but I'm excited to learn, uh, share what I know and learn from each of you a little bit today. So over, over the last couple months, everybody's been uh, purchasing chickens. A lot more, a lot more people interested in, in um, starting their own flock and there's a lot of things to learn. And so over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I just wanted to go over some of the, the basics, some of the, the small mistakes that we can make that um, sometimes end in a lot of fatalities with the birds. The, the chickens are very temperamental, especially in the young in the younger stages. So we'll just talk about some of those things, some of those things that we can do to to avoid that. And I also have a slideshow that I'm going to be sharing with each of you, which has some of the information, a lot more information about as the birds get older, more about chicken coops, feeding them as they as they continue to mature. So you can refer to that for information uh, in the future. Like I said, as of right now, I want to just dive into the first couple weeks of, of owning chickens, which is where a lot of you are, are at. So like I say, we're all probably at different stages, but you probably purchased your, your chickens at maybe the, the local feed store, IFA or Cal Ranch. Um, and I, uh, they, when you when you get the chickens, they're about a week old, maybe two weeks old. And ideally, when you when you take them home, you want to immediately get them under a light. I'm sure you all have have researched a little bit, you know, kind of how to get it started. Um, but I like to get a, just a, a little either a brooder box, which is what's a, which is especially for chickens, or even just a a box, just a smaller box, and put a light in it. They can keep the chickens warm. The the two main problems um, with chicks as they're younger is is the temperature and nutrition. That's that's really what it comes down to. And just a general rule of thumb, um, or I guess so you can so you can know. Um, specifics like when uh, when a chicken is is hatched they stayed about 99 degrees in that incubator that's where the that's where the eggs um that's the temperature the eggs have to be at for them to hatch and so they're they're in that temperature when they when they come out of the egg and i like to keep them at about 95 degrees for the first couple of days right after they're hatched um, that's that's a very small change from what they've been um, growing and developing under and then each week after that, so in their second week, I would typically drop them five degrees, so down to 90, and then just five degrees each week. And so this can be done um, in several ways. I like to have a, just a thermometer in whatever, whatever box I have the chickens in. That way I can kind of gauge the temperature. You can also gauge the temperature though by the, the chicks themselves. If they're if they're huddled underneath the light, you can be sure that they're a little cold, and you've either got to put another a, a hotter light bulb in, or um, lower the light a little bit. Always be careful for um, fire hazard, obviously, especially if you're using a cardboard box. But um, there there's several there's several different ways to go about doing that. But you just need to keep them at that right temperature. And then each week, just continue to 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 slow to to lessen up the temperature. Um, you can tell also when they're when they are too hot because they'll be huddling to the corners of the box. They'll be trying to escape the light, so you can you can gauge that. 
but I like to just, just to be safe, I like to have a thermometer and keep track of it. Um, and then, so after they've, you've had them for four or five weeks, which may be where some of you are at, they, they ideally only need to be at 60 to 70 degrees, which means that during the day, they don't necessarily need any heat. Uh, but if you have them outside, then you're still going to want to put a lamp of some kind on them at night just to provide a little extra heat as right now it's still getting down into sometimes the 40s and uh, even the 30s sometimes at night. Uh, so keep, keep that lamp on them for, for another few weeks, even while they're outside. Um, if you guys, as you guys are thinking about these things, um, if you have questions, I, as Natalie said, you can post them in the chat uh, and we'll, we're gonna talk about them in just a little bit after we go through a few things. So be thinking about that, and I'm sure I'm missing some of the details. Um, the, so that's, that's the temperature side of things. And the other side of things is nutrition. And um, so when in the first six weeks of a chick's life, you want to feed them chick starter. That's what you can get at any feed store, but don't, don't deviate from that. And I like to feed them a higher protein. The protein is one of the, the protein and calcium are two of the, the most important uh, nutritional elements. And so I like to keep it at about 20% protein for that first, um, that first six weeks, which is what most of the chick starters are if you get at the feed store. And those, if you, if you find the bag at the feed store and it says chick starter on it, that's gonna be a complete feed that has everything that they need feed wise for a chick. Now there's many different varieties. So there's gonna be layers, layer feeds, there's all, all kinds of feeds, um, but they all have, a, they're all a little bit different in nutritional value and all meet specific needs. So if, if you go with the chick starter, you'll be just fine. And then make sure they always have feed in their feeder. They, they don't need to be, some people feed their chickens, their chicks just a few times a day um, and there are strategies like that if you want to, if you're looking to feed meat birds or different things. But for most of you, uh, it's just safe to keep um, feed in it all the time. That way they can eat at will, free choice, whenever they want. Um, the faster they're going to grow, the, the better. You want to help them to grow the first couple weeks because once you can get past that initial stage, that's when you don't have to worry about fatalities nearly as much. Um, we're going to bounce back to feed in just a little bit. I want to talk about water real quick though. The water is the other main, main factor. You always, always, always have to have fresh water in there. Um, they, the, the chicks will kick crap and all kinds of stuff in the water and get it dirty. And, and that's going to cause some disease if that can, if that, uh, happens very often. So just every day you've got to be re refilling their water making sure they always have some. So I guess if any of these factors that we're discussing are lacking, um, they're just, like I mentioned, they're very temperamental. And so the chicks will get sick. And if they get sick in the first few weeks, that is when you have all the fatalities. They just, it's really, really hard to pull them out of it. Um, it's, it, you can, but um, we, it's best to just play it safe. And, um, so that's, that's, that's some of the main, just, just very general things to be aware of. I'm sure you, most of you are already doing a lot of these things. Um, and another, another small factor is, is keep their box, whatever container you have, keep that clean too. I like to put, have them in a box and I either put uh, newspaper or some type of cloth rag on the bottom of, uh, of the box. That way it absorbs the moisture, absorbs the their waste, and then you can just um, clean that out and put put new newspaper or whatever in there every couple of weeks to to keep it clean, or every couple of days, every couple of days. Don't wait a couple of weeks uh, to keep that clean. Avoid disease. Now, some of the chicks that you have purchased will have been um, they will have received a vaccine before you purchased them. Most of the chicks are. So they're going to be 
um, less susceptible to certain diseases, which is good. That doesn't guarantee everything, but that's going to help. And also you can purchase medicated chick feed, which just has some different medicine in it to obviously help avoid some of these diseases. Me personally, I, I am not super partial towards the medicated or the vaccines just because once again, when they're in those early stages of their lives, they're very susceptible to so many different factors um, that I just, I don't get too worried about that. But you can, you can look into that if that's something that you're interested in. A couple things to, to be aware of as you're watching your chicks grow, um, a lot of times, often, especially when they're, when they have, when you initially purchased them and they've changed locations, um, they will get a little bit sick and sometimes they'll get, uh, their, their poop will, will really clump up on their backside. That's a very common, very common thing that's going to happen. Um, now if you, if you just continue to let this build up, then they're going to get more constipated and cause problems. So as soon as I see this happening, I will, it's, it's kind of gross, but you've got to, you've got to get the check and you've got to clean off that backside. You've got to, you've got to keep it clean so they can, so that doesn't build up. And I will usually get it a little bit moist, the ball that's on the back and either get a pliers or something that I can kind of get that clump to disintegrate. And then with uh, some, get some Vaseline and a Q-tip and, and rub on that backside to, to keep it moistened, keep it from, from clumping up again. If you're not careful, then you can rip the skin off the, the flesh off the back end and that can cause problems as well. So just be very careful as you're doing that, but watch for those things. Um, you'll, you'll be able to see different chicks as they're, as they're more healthy than others. Some of them just won't have the life that others do. Um, and sometimes like generally those chicks are the ones that are going to be developing these problems that that problem that I just mentioned um so just just watch for that there is also at if, at the feed store there is some little packs of just vitamins and supplements this is what I like to do and that you can mix in with their water just to give them a little vitamin boost um those first couple weeks if, as to give them a little bit of help through the the that more difficult time. Um, so that's once again, kind of the generals. I, I want to talk about with the future, the next couple of weeks that you guys are going to be facing now, just so you can make some decisions. Um, there's, there's several different options for feeding, feeding the chicks. Um, you want to stay with that chick starter until they're about six weeks old. And then there's a lot of different opinions on to what to do after that. Most of your chickens are going to start laying eggs around anywhere from 18 weeks old to 24 weeks old, depending on the breed. And so you, there's, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different kinds of feed that you can feed them. And so after they have reached that six week period, you don't want to go straight from chick starter to a layer feed. That some people do it. Um, you won't be able to generally see the problems that are occurring, but there's just some major differences in the feed uh, content. That's that's what I do is I make chicken feeds. So this is something I'm fairly passionate about. Um, there's there's very different protein levels and calcium. Calcium is one of the biggest things. Um, uh, a full grown laying hen needs a lot of calcium. That's what the eggshells is made up of is calcium. And so a layer feed has uh, about nine to 10% of its makeup is just calcium. And most of that is going to egg production. Now your chicks, they only need calcium for bone development, which is so little. Um, that's usually around one to 2% of their feed. So a major difference. So if you just go straight into feeding your chicks a layer feed, they're going to be eating way too much calcium. Their body doesn't know what to do with it. And it causes some deficiencies, um, which in, you won't be able to tell, but in the long run, it will, it will affect 
they're laying and their health. Um, they're not going to be laying eggs as long because just internally, they're they're not going to be as efficient. So that was a long spill, but just be very aware of that and stay with with a feed that's not a layer. For, and uh, right after that, there's other feeds like a, it's, there's developer feeds, grower feeds. Um, that have less calcium and are specifically designed for chickens between six to 12 weeks old and then 12 to 18 weeks old. So just, just look for those feeds. And also, even in those feeds, there's going to be different things you can get. Um, I like to get a feed that's lower in protein. So you're, you're gonna give them 20% protein mixture for that first six weeks just to help them to grow quite, quite fast, get through that initial stage. But then you wanna slow things down a little bit. For the, next, for the next couple months, I like to kick them back to around a 12% protein mix, uh, feed, which you can get at the feed store. This way, it doesn't, um, it doesn't force their body to grow faster than it needs to. If you feed them too high of protein, it, it will, stimulate their reproductive organs to grow faster than necessary which will make them start laying early but once again in the long run it's going to cause problems that we can't see so to increase the longevity of your bird's life and health just refrain from feeding them really high protein for for the first couple months until they're at least about 18 weeks old um, so consider those things. I have those things a little bit in my PowerPoint that you're going to be shared with you, so you can so you can see some some examples. Um, it, it can get fairly complicated, but just just the general rule of thumb is the first six weeks feed them a chick starter around 20% protein, and then that six to 18 weeks you want to feed them around 12% protein, um, a developer or grower feed. Then after that 18 weeks. You can get them on a layered feed around 16%, 18% protein. Um, and then it's pretty consistent throughout the remainder of their life. But these first couple months, like I mentioned, are very, just very um, a vital time. Is how they grow is how they're going, is, is really, really affects their production for the next several years. Um, so be my, very mindful of some of those things. Um, just lastly, and then we're going to jump into questions. Um, you, as you, as you're trans transitioning from your chicks indoors to outdoors, um, you need to be very aware of predators and also just, just the coop that you're putting them in. I have a couple examples of chicken coops in my PowerPoint. You can, you can view. There's tons of resources online as well. Um, plenty of, of resources to learn about. But for the first, well, a safety, a safety um, response for chickens or a natural thing that they do is they roost. So once chickens are a little older, they, they, they at night, they get it, find an elevated place in the coop to sleep, which is, depending on your coop, just keeps them off the ground. And this is to keep them away from predators. Now, this really does keep them safe from uh, sometimes cats, sometimes skunks, raccoons, this is, it's, it can be very helpful. But for the first couple months of their life, they're not old enough to jump up to a, a roost or to get off the ground. So they'll continue to huddle on the ground. And in my experience, this is typically when I would have any problems with predators because they're on the ground, really easy to attack from any outside animal. So any animal that would dig into the coop or uh, find a way through an open door, it was, it was very easy for them to attack. So be very mindful of that. Be mindful of all the ways that predators can get into your coop. Um, make sure that they can't dig under the outsides um, and, and just keep any, anything from getting in at least until those chickens can, can be roosting at night, because then they're just a lot safer. Um, 
And one last thing that you should all probably be aware of, if you purchased your chickens at the feed stores, you probably purchased uh, just females because you just wanted chickens that are going to lay eggs. Um, unfortunately, you're probably, if you have very many, you're probably going to end up with a rooster, a male. That just happens. They, they don't guarantee 100% um, success when they are sexing the birds. And so quite often what they think is a female turns out to be a male. And in Cedar City, there's some restrictions on having roosters. And so just be aware of those things. If your chickens start to crow, eventually one or two of them start to crow, don't be too alarmed because that, that just happens. But then you have, you're in the predicament where you'll have to find a place for the rooster. But uh, just, just be aware of that. Um, I think that that's, that's the, the basic things that I wanted to cover, hopefully answered several questions. Um, but now, Natalie, I wanna, I'll turn it back to you and you can help facilitate some, some Q&A for the last little bit. That sounds great. Thank you, Austin. It is so great to have you share all of your experience and knowledge with us. Um, as people are putting their questions in, I will just get things going with a, a few of the questions that have started. Um, do you switch, when you switch to layer feed, do you do that once they've laid their first egg? How do you know to, to switch that? That's a great question. Um, I typically will just start at about 18 weeks old. Um, the only breeds that sometimes start to lay earlier is the white leghorn. But depending on the breed, I like to start about two weeks prior to laying, when they're mm -hmm. supposed to be laying. That's good. So they're prepared for it. Yeah, so um, they can start to start to be ready. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, you talked about the dirty water. Any tips for how to keep that cleaner? Are there any tip tricks that you use to keep the water cleaner? I never mastered it. It's a it's a never ending battle. Um, I just the only thing I could say would be I. In the waters, they're typically just quart jars or something like that that you set in the coop with them. Um, as the chicks get a little older, I like to just put a two by four or something underneath it to keep it higher off the ground so that they have a harder time jumping into it. So keep it kind of beak level. That way they, they can't get as much crap in it. Um, but even still, it's, it's a difficult task to master. <laughs> It's a constant thing, huh? constant thought. <laughs> okay, um, so if you go into IFA, uh, which breeds could you select that would be easier, that live the easiest? Um, IFA does a great job that most of the breeds that they have are very, pretty good breeds for this area. Now this is a topic that I love to, to talk a lot about. So I'm gonna reference you more to my slideshow than anything because I have kind of my favorites for the area outlined. Um, but I will just mention a couple of very good egg layers, okay? Um, there's some, the Aracana, IFA typically carries Aracana. Right now it might be a little sparse because there's a lot of high demand for chicks, but Aracana is a really good one. Um, Rhode Island Red and Bard Rock. That you can't go wrong with some of those. There, that's, that's some brown egg layers and also some um, green egg layers. Um, but reference my slideshow a little bit more on that question because there, there's there's a lot that that that's a, that that could be a 30 minute class very easy. <laughs> okay, on the type of bird. So yeah. uh, just so the participants know, we will be sharing that with everyone that registered. If you're joining us with Facebook Live, we, uh, I believe we're going to see if we can put that on our Facebook page, Austin's slideshow. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, the other question was winter. Is, what can we do to prepare the chickens for winter? Um, hopefully spring is the best time to purchase your chicks because that gives them quite a long time to be full grown 
before winter hits. Um, if you purchase your chicks in the fall, then they're not quite as mature. And so you have to be extra careful. But by the time, if you purchase your chicks now, by the time winter comes along, they will be full grown. And so you just want to make sure you have a coop that you can fully enclose at night. My coops, once again, I have some pictures on my slideshow, but they all have windows that I can open and close um, in the mornings and evenings. And so I, I can trap all the heat in at night and then open it up to let the sunlight in in the daytime because that's the two main things is, is again, temperature and also sunlight when your chickens are full grown. Um, your chickens will always just take a little bit of a, they will, their production, their egg production will decrease in the winter um, most of the time, just because the days are shorter. So they don't, they're not able to get as much sunlight. And then those temperatures just drop so drastically that it affects them. They're very hardy birds. All chickens are quite hardy and they, they, um, they're going to live, they're going to stay healthy, but just they're a little bit more stressed. And so their egg production declines. Some things you can do is you can put a timer, a timed light in your chicken coop, which um, will turn on for certain hours of the day and give them more time, more light to be off of their roost and eating more. This can help increase production. You can also put heaters in your coops to, to up the heat. Both of those things are optional. Um, they will increase your production, but they will also increase your expenses. But those are things to consider. Um, I have I have lots more details on that too on the slideshow to to reference. Um, yeah. Do you use any kind of heater to keep the water from freezing? What do you do for that? That's another that's another tough one. I have just always filled the waters every morning um, with warm water. There are things you can purchase little heaters to go underneath your water to keep it from freezing um, i know that is something that, that is an option it's not that's i have never done that but i know that you can purchase those okay so, that the, so chicken, the water would freeze but it would oh go ahead sorry the, the, the chickens just won't ever be drinking at night when it's the coldest they're always going to be on the roost so it's okay if it freezes at night, as long as you can get up there first thing in the morning and, and, and get them some fresh water that's not frozen. Okay, that's good to know. Um, any tips on how to, oh, we already did that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, does chicken's diet affect the flavor of the eggs? So eating weeds, would that make the eggs taste bad? That's a great question. Um, it absolutely does. It affects, it affects the nutrition and the, the taste. Now, the, like you, you, when you get an egg from the store, it's very, very yellow, like, because uh, those chickens are in a cage, just eating feed. Any chicken that we would have in our, just in our backyard coop, they have, they're gonna eat more bugs, just naturally things are coming in there. They're getting a little bit more variety, and so their eggs are going to be darker. But if you let them out, they're, it's going to change even more because they're getting more bugs, more weeds. I've never thought that it tastes bad. I think it tastes better. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't need to be worried about that. Um, so they're they're going to avoid plants that would make their eggs taste bad anyways. Okay. So they typically what they eat doesn't have a drastic effect on their on their eggs. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Um, do you have to do anything special to get birds to lay in the nesting box as opposed to other places? Um, sometimes, occasionally birds just don't like to lay in the nesting box. I, I would purchase, I would go to sometimes Cow Ranch and you can purchase little wooden eggs. Um, oh. Sometimes they're just home decor, but I would purchase those and I would put them wherever I wanted them to lay. And usually that would do the trick because they would see that there's, this is where they should lay. Um, occasionally there's, there's a chicken that doesn't like to lay in the box. Sometimes that's just the way it is. Um, but also if they're, if they're all not laying in the box, you probably have a problem with your nesting box and you need to redesign it to be more fitting for the chickens, an area that's 
dark, easy to access, um, that's comfortable, that can fit several chickens. Okay, that was good to know. All right, well, let me, there's one last question. Um, how do you know when a chick is able to move to the coop? What are the signs or physical, physical growth of the chicken? I like I mentioned the the temperature kind of stages. So um, if you're lowering the temperature about five degrees a week, um, typically that would put them, you know, if, if they're four weeks old, then you can have it down 20 degrees from when they were hatched. So that would take you from 95 degrees to about 75 degrees. And so depending on where you live, if you're if your temperatures are in constantly in the 70s outside, then your chicks are going to be fine to go outside at about four weeks. Um, but where I live in Cedar City, you know, it's getting pretty cold at night still. But the days are usually in the 60s and the 70s. So at four weeks, I would put them outside. Um, and then at night, I would put, just make sure they have a heat lamp. So I would only turn the heat lamp on at night where they're going to be staying. And, and then I would, I would continue to do that for another two to three weeks until, until all the those temperatures are matching. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Austin. Um, again, we will share with everyone the slideshow in a little bit. And Austin, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming on our show. Thank you, Natalie.